What key are you going to sing in, man? I'm working on the key part. This is you going to bug me about the key now? <laughs> it's right. It's a little off tune. Here getting to go. know you. Getting to know all about you. Starting to like you. Hoping that you like me. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly I'm bright and breezy Because of all the beautiful and new things We're learning about you Day by day Day by day by That was Welcome That was Yes That was Yes Ha ha Oh Oh I'm, I'm emotional <laughs> I am man, too. That was just, jeez, man. And here, take a look, you guys. Here is our, here's our guest today. Welcome, everybody. Author. Well, so many things. <laughs> let me, let me just, well, let me, just, let me I know, it's you. a whole bunch, isn't now, it? That's why I quote it. I hear from, from Fish and Fashion. Right. You know, which is an action and adventure-packed memoir filled with her true stories, exciting stories. We're going to find out about her adventures Mari Kimura, who has Japanese blood, an American mentality, and a Latin heart. <laughs> I like that. We're going to get to hear about her memoirs. Everybody, welcome. Yes, I sir. Guess. Thank you. Mari, sing for our ladies. <laughs> <laughs> they like you, too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, welcome, Mari. You know, so interesting. Everybody, take a look at this book, Fish and Fashion. You know, and... Just a wonderful piece. You've been involved in so many things. It's so hard to even think about where we start. But you come from a family of people who are doers. Yes. For people who don't know, and of course I know you don't know this, because I did none of them. Mari's father, who immigrated to the U.S., uh, he invented the famous sushi dish known as the California roll. That's right. That's right. Back in the 1950s. Right. Wow. I didn't know it was out that. For many of you, yeah. that is the sushi dish that you get. Wow, unbelievable! Wow, so and so she comes, like I said, she comes from a family of doers, which has a lot to do how she got started. In the 1970s, she worked in the fishing industry, mm -hmm. and when I say work, she also was an ambassador overseas, representing industries and involved with, you know, oversight and putting in improvements. Right. Good. So we get a chance to hear about some of that. Yeah. But she also then changed careers in the 80s. When she became a successful Hollywood fashion stylist. Wow. Wow. Working with many celebrities. And uh, who knows? We may get some dirt. We told her, <laughs> whatever dirt, dirt crumbs. Right. Any little dirt, dirty things from under fingernails, anything you happen to have. It's all clean. <laughs> it's all clean. Right. There we go. So, so Mari, welcome. Tell us about... The book. What 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 are you doing today? Wow, tell us about this. Well, I wrote the book um, to bring awareness about environmental issues, and also to try and help inspire young people um, on the fishing industry and also the entertainment industry in Hollywood. Now, what caused you to even t undertake that? What what made you just woke up one day? You're out jogging or something, and said, "I'm going to write a book." How did you come to even think? to do this? Well, it was around 2000, year 2000. Okay. Um, I was working, I'm working on an environmental project and um, I kind of got tired of um, of dealing with the venture capital people who are... Well, I know, we, we too, we yeah. understand. <laughs> you know, all we think about is money, 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 but we need to focus on the environment. And well, um, so I decided, you know, I'm going to write a book and a screenplay and uh, see what I can do with it to wow. bring more environmental awareness and also to raise some capital for my other environmental project. Because right now, with all the stuff going on with the money crunches, yes. right. you know, this is a time when people kind of throw the environment underneath the bus, you oh, know, yes, with the spills, the issues we're yeah. having with BP. And by the way, they just came out with today some new data showing they're still picking up oil. Oh, yeah. yes. So there's a, this is actually a very needed area, and it's those reminders, because we are somewhat distracted, and some folks mm -hmm. using the money as an issue. So how did you get even involved with these environmental issues? This goes back, I guess, again, to your experiences with family almost, because it was your father right. who got you involved in fishing. Right. My father was a very 
um, a very big humanitarian and uh, we were always against net fishing and so he decided to bring uh, a more modernized fishing technology which is environmentally safe called the uh, deep sea uh, long line fishing now now for those of you I I do watch Discovery Channel and a few of the other ones. But, and I understand it. With the problem with the nets was, first of all, the wide nets would catch a variety of, of the sea animals. Right. Whatever sea animal that goes into the net is captured. And, and you're capturing a lot of unwanted species. And they basically die. Or get, right. They get drowned. Uh, they get caught in the net. And, and they, you know, it, it's such a waste. And it's so harmful for the environment. Also, the nets, when they... Um, when you lose control of them, you know, they become little tumbleweeds on the bottom of the ocean and, and all these bottom fishes get caught and it's, it's a disaster. Now, some of these nets, too, even miles long, I understand. I see oh, some yes. pictures that are incredible. You think of a net, you know, you think of a little net. No, these are like between boats oh, yeah. where we're laying out. Right. And so, wow, and so it goes back to the old line fishing, which in the old days, right, right they would go and cast, Chicken even with fishing. the tuna. Right, and they had a whole technique of casting the lines, pulling them in. Right. So your father showed them how to make that work again, or at least was involved with getting away from some of the other techniques? Yes, yeah, so we, we decided to start this project in Mexico, and uh, with, the, with the support of the Mexican government, okay. the fisheries department, we decided to make a, <coughs> an educational fishing program to educate the technology, and also to make uh, sashimi gray tuna, which is a different type of uh, process. Uh -huh. And it and it, ha it increases the value of the finished product, the, the, the fish. I've heard that the, the price one fish, one average tuna, mm -hmm. is the, can bring in there's some, some ridiculous numbers you hear oh, being yes. thrown around. Oh, yes, in the Japanese fish market, yes, definitely. Wow. Well, now, did you run into politics in terms of dealing with the government? You know, oh, sure. with the Mexican government, the Japanese government, there's and even some of the other countries, there's been this issue... I guess over the territories that they fish right. and how much they fish and right. and this issue of whether or not people have been overfishing. Right. Um, all the countries in the world have a, a 250 nautical mile limit. So all the you know the 250 mile limit from the shore belongs to the country. And that's where most of the fish, you know, are captured and, and found. Wow. Wow. And my father was able to pioneer the first international fishing company in Mexico. Wow. And through this program with the government. So now here you go, tagging along with Dad. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the good daughter. The good daughter, right? Uh -huh. But then you end up going off in your, on your own later on. Sure, I wanted to get out of my well, out yeah. of house. <laughs> well, tell, well, tell us about your early schooling now, Mari. Like, what, so tell us, like, where did you grow up? I, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Attended public schools? Yes. What, what schools? Do you mind? Uh... Um, Los Angeles High School. Oh, yeah, okay. Everybody, Romans. well, see, we know LA High. Yeah. LA High. Right, yeah. and they used to be the opening segment for so many different TV shows. Mm -hmm. Back in the day. Back right. in the day. Yeah. Remember Room 222? That's I was about what I was... to say, mm -hmm. see, Room 222. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you did that, and then what? how about after, after high school? Then what? Um, I went to go help my father's uh, business. Okay. And uh, we middled in different things, export, import, technology, different things. It's all in the book. Wow. And uh, my father was initially a pioneer in uh, many different things. Um, he pioneered the first Japanese ra uh, cable radio station. Wow. Okay. And he was also the first uh, Japanese uh, production house. And he wow. produced a lot of commercials for Japan in the United States. And uh, through that, uh, I met Donnie and Marie Osmond when I was a child. Wow. <laughs> One bad apple. Don't you already say <laughs> Don't get him to say <laughs> What? You guys surprised I know a Donnie Osmond song? Yeah, I don't know See, anything about that. broad -based. Yeah, I was, born in the late, I was born in the late 80s. It's pre premature uh, baldness. That's all. <laughs> so with all these adventures now, you ended up serving some official posts yourself how did you come to be in those positions like as an advisor i understand later on in life i, I became um, the representative of the japanese fishing association in mexico wow mm -hmm. 
So you've been traveled. You've been traveling. Oh, yeah. Traveled a lot. Now, so the book deals with all these exploits because one of the things that seems to be a recurring theme is change. And obviously, right. you're a person who is willing to embrace change, willing to take some oh, risks. Yes, yes definitely. <laughs> I, life is short. You have to like experience as much adventure as possible and have a good time and learn from your experiences. Well, that's how you... Right? That, so, so tell us what made you go. Because, you know, he says fish and fashion. Right. Everybody, fish and fashion. Well, when my father established <laughs> his fishing company in Mexico, um, I wanted to be a part of the action. So instead of working in the office, um, the corporate office, I decided to take a regional job and, and coordinate the fishing boats. So wow. I took care of the fishermen, over 150 fishermen. And... Um, Oh, I had a blast over there in Mexico. A lot of adventures. Where in Mexico were you living at, to do this? All over. All wow. over. Um, because fish is a migratory. Okay, you know, okay, right, right. So depending on the season, one minute I'm in one port, the next minute I'm an, at another port. Wow. And uh, it, it was a very interesting and exciting career. But how did you get to switch from that? I mean, to high fashion. <laughs> right. Okay, okay, first, Mari, even I'm having a background, Mari, you know, you know, so far, here you are working with Dad. I mean, all okay. this stuff, hard working. Uh -huh. In Mexico, right. flying all around, coordinating fishermen. Right. Obviously a hands-on wow. kind of job. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, after about a decade of, of dealing in the fishing industry, uh, I, d I decided that I should venture out on my own instead of continue working with my family's business. Uh, so I came back to Los Angeles, and I decided to become an artist. Now, okay, okay. Now, how did, tell, how, what was the process of that, Mari? Now, how, because that's, just, you know, as you say so matter-of-factly, <laughs> you do, you say it so matter-of-factly, I decided to become an artist. Because so far in your background, you hadn't mentioned anything involving art so far. Uh, were you doing that as you were doing the other things? Was it something you did as a child? Or? Uh, well, I always like to sew. Okay. And, and create my own fashion wear. Okay. And I always got a lot of compliments from my my outfits. And so I decided, you know, what kind of artist do I want to be? I didn't want to be a dancer. I didn't want to be a singer or a mus musician. Um, so I decided, you know what, maybe I'll look into fashion. And I, that's how I became Very fashion. practical. Mm -hmm. And Very so, practical. so then what happened? And uh, my sister, Margaret Kimura is a veteran makeup artist. Okay. Okay. And um, she, she, very established. She's also a bestseller, uh, or, um, Arthur, of the wow. book Fish and Fashion, published by Harper Collin. Wow. And uh, she s saw that I was interested in fashion, and she's the one that hooked me up and got me into the uh, production end of the business. Wow. Now, I did retail, and I sold my designs in stores such as Neiman Marcus, Fresh Siegel, and other retail businesses on Melrose. And now, did that, how did, is that something that your sister helped make that bridge for you, or did you I, just run into people? I initially, uh, you know, started selling into the retail uh, business, uh, my designs. And you then just went around to the stores yourself, and or and I had my 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 team of uh, representatives. So you had you used you you had a business background. Oh yes. So I'm you working, you so you did this in a very organized. Right. You didn't just come in with your little back you know knapsack of clothes. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> as a matter of fact, Mar uh, Maria, I think I'm what I think is you know a lot of people want to become an artist, right. a successful artist, and I always tell everybody. You know, take time to learn about business. Because if you want to succeed as an artist, when you have that business background behind your art and creativity, it gets you ahead a lot more than having to depend on other people to do your business. Well, so important. We, we have to remind people in music that it is the music business. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, you're, and so right, uh, even doing this, Wow, so many books I've read on, on you know, business 101, starting your own. You have to do those things. But, wow, that shows the difference because you came in mm -hmm. organized. Right. And ready to With step it up. With business experience. With business and experience. And that helped me right. succeed a lot. Even knowing the right people to talk to and who to go about. Right. And how to strategize a plan. Because whatever you create becomes a product. And that product has to be promoted and sold in order to make profits. I have a question real quick because sure. I, I know we can go on forever. See, I told her she's going to get an hour 
<laughs> but it's gonna go a little bit longer. Okay. I got a question, <laughs> and sure. it's coming from Mac Port, you know, Mac GNN, Port Townsend, Washington. He had a question about. Hi, Mac. <laughs> that's a good one. She's always doing it. She, she's, she's a stylist. She knows these things. The, he asked, you know, how did the nuclear crisis affect the fishing industry if it had? Uh, yeah, because lately we know that you've had, like all of us have been watching and knowing right. how much of an environmentalist you are. Mm -hmm. The whole thing that went down at Fukushima. Right, it's a disaster. It's, it's scary. And it can happen anywhere in the world. And yeah. right now, I think there's a big concern on how can we control um, the nuclear uh, isotope, the, you know, nuclear radiation from leaking uh, the, the area. And that's, a, that's, that's the biggest concern. And I don't think that there's really a lot of solutions. Wow. And even with the Gulf spill last year, the BP Gulf spill, right. I think the world saw that there's not many technology to, um, to capture the oil so it doesn't spread. To fix it. People want right. us to be able to fix mistakes right. like so easy. Oh, they can fix that. Uh -huh. Well, what if the answer is no, we can't? It's, it's <laughs> difficult. Obviously, yeah. we saw that we, it can't be done. <laughs> You know, the private sector is depending on the government to do it, and the government doesn't have the solution, and they're looking at the private sector, and, and it's going back and forth while the environment keeps getting that's contaminated. Exactly right. And it's a really sad situation. And th that's just called, you know, that's for, um, what is it, fossil fuel. Right. And then you have now a nuclear disaster. Right. You know, and, and the bottom line is if we don't, we humans don't do something to control those disasters, you know, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. What have you heard, too, about how the Japanese population is responding to that? Fish is such an integral part oh, sure. of their diet, of their whole way of life, the industry. How are they really responding? I've heard it's hard at the fish markets that, you know, with, with dealing with the, the products that are available. Right. Well, Japan is relatively an island, and they don't have a lot of natural resources, so they, they depend on getting their uh, their their food and and their and their and their supplies from foreign countries. Wow. Okay. So it's it's not so much that they cultivate their product own products, but they depend on other countries like the United States and other and other countries, even Mexico, everywhere, uh, also China, uh, to get the raw materials that they need in order to continue supplying for their country. Wow. Well, well, something for all of us to keep in mind. Yeah, we try to remind people, right, Vic? Yeah, you know, all the time. And, and I don't want, you know, the, the part that Mari and I was talking about early in the morning, early this morning, is is that uh, the group is agreeing with you, especially. You. It's you know, it's great info. They're loving this information that you're imparting upon them. And I, it, it, sometimes we joke around a lot, but it is to really say this is a serious point because I know Mario's a strong advocate of what they call solutions-oriented results. And he, sometimes he frames things to say, I have to affect you so you can care. So Yeah, yeah. because we do do that. We know it's not pleasant. You yeah. know, we do. We, sometimes we do throw stuff in your face. Yeah. You know, because we want to keep the idea fresh. We're not going to let you forget about BP. We're not going to let you forget about Fukushima. And we're going to remind you about all the other nuclear facilities that are all around the world, that this could happen, that's the point to remember, that this could happen anywhere. Right. The Japanese were supposedly, you know, here you have one of the most, uh, the deepest pockets economically at, at, at that time. Right. Maybe one of the most uh, financially solvent countries in the world, supposedly the best prepared, yeah. and look at what has occurred. Yeah. See, that's my point. My point has been, look at what is not being done yet. Yeah. Right. Yet for the Japanese people who are in those shelters and because of their culture and how brave and how courageous they are and their, un their unwillingness to complain, yeah. you know, right. uh, uh, it's, you, they're still suffering. So we will, we will keep reminding people of that, Mari. Thank you. Yeah. This is a perfect breakfast for your morning show. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oatmeal, you know. Oatmeal is dense, but it's good for you. <laughs> That's a good one. Good That's for our good colon. Right. And you know how much we care about colon That's care here that was at Pax Yeah, unfortunately, when Mario imparts wisdom about the colon, he doesn't frame it as nicely as you have, Mario. You have to catch us on the off day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, colon can be a difficult subject to breach. Well, okay. tell us, Mari, you know, as you got in, because the book is, again, so much about 
the trials, the journey of an individual. And, it, and, it, and again, it's serving to illustrate why, why so many more of us should be willing to embrace change, sure. right? Yeah. To embrace challenge. That's why, again, I, I, I marvel at Mac McAllister, our GNM bureau chief. 72 yeah. years old. Yeah, I agree. Who's doing 3D animation, I, a I weekly agree. radio show. Thank wow. you. Yeah. And that's why I so respect what so many of our, our fans do. Norman Ross out there in Cleveland working his day job and still chasing his dream. Yeah. So that's why they, these people are special to us. Right. Because we, too, embrace that. And, I, and it serves to inspire. So, so but Mari. Yes. And, and looking at this, so you, you really got to move into this Hollywood world. Yes. And he, <laughs> now, here you are. We got to know a little <laughs> bit about your kind of energy and your vibe. Mm -hmm. A very kind of down-to-earth. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an assuming kind of person. And here you are, L.A., you know, environmentalist. You start to meet Hollywood folks because yes. you're styling them. Mm -hmm. How was that as an adjustment, first of all? It was fun. <laughs> it was really fun. It was challenging. It was a lot of hard work. Um, it was a great experience. Well, tell them, okay, tell our people, for the woes of us who are like three years old, okay. <laughs> what is, what is it actually the day-to-day -day job? Of a stylist, when you when you're a Hollywood sty fashion stylist, cost, mm -hmm. well, I mean, what is what is your day and week style like? Is this Monday through Friday? Is it what are the Sometimes hours? Sometimes it's uh, twenty four seven. Wow! You, know, you get um, a stylist becomes engaged in a project, whether it's uh, advertisement or um, entertainment. Okay. Or you, you film. It could be a celebrity. Okay. It, it could be any kind of project, and and my job was to create uh, image. For the uh, for the uh, talent, you know, for the celebrities and models. Can you give us an example of like an image that you may be will typically be asked to create for somebody? Sure. Um, if you go to my website, okay. www.fishandfashion.com. Yeah, boy, that she's right on point. You know, you need to come back more often. Oh, thank you. She's good. Um, <laughs> what you can do is uh, in in my website, uh, there's video music video links that I worked on, and as a matter of fact. Um, I don't mean to brag, but all brag. my music videos went number one. Wow. Okay. Can you, can so you what give you the do? information on the videos that went number one? What music sure. videos? Sure. Um, Marlon Jackson's Baby Tonight, okay. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. There we go. Thinking wow. of You. Wow. Um, and others. If you go wow. to my website, you get all this information. Take a look, everybody. Here's the site, fishandfashion.com. So, now, Mari, to study up on this, you would, like, talk to the folks, look at the project, and then... Just using your own personal experience, right. start to pull all that together. Right. It depends on the project. Sometimes you, uh, you know, you have you work with a photographer or the director. Okay. And see what the concept of the project is, and try to coordinate the image to the director or the photographer's uh, idea. Okay. Sometimes um, I get to have my own control. Okay. Over the image, and I can do whatever I want, which is always the fun part. Wow. Uh, commercials, you know, it all depends on, on each project. And also when you're dressing um, celebrities or, or models or, or any kind of people, you know, it's, it's kind of sensitive. Sometimes uh, you have to, you have to kind of work around what they like and, and what they don't like. Can you tell them what to wear? Yes. But sometimes, you know, people can get a little insecure. Maybe they want that. Yeah. They may not. Do, did you find more resistance or were more people welcoming to the idea of having a stylist? Actually, I, I lucked out. I, a lot of people just let me do my own thing. Wow. You know? And uh, a lot of the stylists back then and also now, uh, they, get their, they get a budget and they take the bun money and they go shopping. Wow. And I was, I'd never worked that way. I didn't like that. I always wanted to create one of a kind original images. So you would then start to create things, right. sew them. Right. I would design. Custom design. I them. would design and, and sew them, and I would stay up like three, four days and nights in a row to create that one of a kind image. And because I went the extra mile, I always got more work than the other stylists. Because I believe, you know, I think what you call it um, old school days, when yeah. you look yes. at old movies and such you oh, know yeah. the images were customized they were they were and they always looked nice yeah uh, i loved edith head who was a, a, wow. a wonderful fashion designer um, and always that one-of-a-kind image customized image yeah. these days if you look at the celebrities you know look at the music videos 
it's all store bought, you know, store bought images. Yeah. And I always worked against that. I always thought that celebrities should create their own trend, not follow what's already out there. Now, following up on that, any stories you want to tell us about any celebrities that you've uh, interacted with? Well, they're all in the book, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they they're are in the very book. detailed yeah. <laughs> yeah. information in the book. Yeah. If you look at uh, look in the back of the cover, you'll see a list of all the celebrities that I worked with. Wow. Feature stories about Mari's interactions with celebrities such as Donny Osmond and the Osmond family. Yes. Bill Gates. Right. The king of pop, Michael Jackson. Yes. Wow. Marlon Jackson. Mm -hmm. Barry Manilow. Right. Wow. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Alyssa Milano. Little Richard. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I knew you were going there. <laughs> Cuba Gooding Jr., Paula Abdul, Winona Ryder, and others. Right. Wow. So everybody get this book, and you can find out all about her exploits with the celebrities. King of Pop, Michael Jackson. How was he? Uh, he was very shy, um, to a point. He loved attention. Um, a very interesting character. I always respected him as an artist. Yes. Just a wonderful, wonderful person. Yes. Um, I have only good thoughts about that man. So you now, maybe because of your energy, you've had mostly positive experiences. Any, yes. Who would you say, treat, that's the easiest one to, to cite, right? Who stands out in your mind as really treating you the nicest, being the friendliest I, as a celebrity? Oh, there are so many, so many. I, I can't say, I, you know, just one person. Um, well, Donny Osmond was just a sweetheart. Wow, okay. Because um, it's good. We, 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 know, we always get on the ones that we think are, no offense, assholes. Uh -huh. but so, <laughs> so it's nice to celebrate the ones that are positive people. Right, Michael yeah. Jackson, definitely. Yeah. Um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. They're, they're just Maurice White. Uh, uh, was, Maurice I, White, yes. Yeah, I, I love him. Um, so many, so many uh, different people. And not only celebrities, but also photographers. Photographers such as Bobby Holland, Moshe Bracca. That's Danny Holland, our, our resident fine red bone. Right. <laughs> That's her uncle. Right. Yeah. Bobby Holland, yes. Wow. Uh, different models. Uh, you know, I always, I, I was lucky to, to work with a lot of different people. Wow. Well, take a look, you guys, at the website once again. We want you to go take a look at the book. It's available right now, right, Mari? Tell me they can get it. Uh, at, at my um, website and also at Amazon.com. Oh, I love Amazon. Oh, you, Mari, you did a great job. You didn't cover up the graphic images. You know, I'm a cartoon man. I like <laughs> images, man. Try yeah. not. That, very good. Remember that series? Remember that serial and commercial? And fashion. There you go. You guys, it's, once again, our guests... Mari Kimura, go take a look. Fish and fashion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Make sure you get the right one, too. I saw there's another Mari Kimura. Oh. Who's She's a, a violinist. violinist. I, I sent that it, It's Mari Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mari Lorraine. Right. The real Mari. Yeah, yeah. The real Mari. Yeah, this, she has the juice. I did all the prep work. I was ready for the violinist to come in here. Um, actually, uh, the violinist Mari Kimura is also my friend in Facebook. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. that, I can see that happen. Have you guys communicated? Oh, yeah. We communicated. Really? We became uh, Facebook friends. And she lives in the East Coast. <laughs> I live in the West Coast. <laughs> wow, you guys. Well, this has been Sippin' and Schmoozin'. Getting to know you. Getting to know all about you. Getting to like you. Hoping that you like me. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly I'm bright and breezy Because of all the beautiful and new things We're learning about you day by day It's like the hokey pokey yeah, you, Put your left foot anybody? out, put your right oh, foot I like this song Do the hokey pokey <laughs> <laughs> Do the hokey pokey